Welcome everyone to using the digi digital math curriculum platform and planning for comprehensive math instruction. Um, we will get started in just a moment, I think. Looks like there's just a few people still joining. All right, do we want to get started, ladies? All right. Uh, so this session uh, is aimed at highlighting the valuable resources available on the Ontario online platform of the Ontario Math Curriculum. We also aim to identify some of the main components to consider when planning for a comprehensive math instruction for your students. Um, we'll do a quick introduction, perhaps. Um, so my name is Tanya Steele, and I am an instructional coach. And I'm Brianne Gordon, and I'm also an instructional coach. Hello, everyone. My name is Trini Cobb, also an instructional coach. And I think I can keep things going. I'm going to start um, to take some time at the beginning of our session for our territorial acknowledgement. Um, and I would like to acknowledge that we are residing on stolen land. We are privileged enough to benefit from the mutual sharing of this land because of the multiple treaties signed with many Indigenous groups who call this land their traditional territory. The LKDSB spans across multiple treaties, so I will acknowledge that the land that my house is on is in Chatham, which is Treaty 2, the McKee Treaty, established in 1790. And if you are looking for more information on um, the treaty that your residence resides on or your school or you have a cottage somewhere, I encourage you to go to the website Whose Land you can see uh, an image from it um, on the screen. And then there's also the click here that is linked to that website. Um, so it is the map that shows you multiple, um, all the multiple treaties across Canada, as well as many indigenous communities nearby. And um, there's also information on, on more information on the treaties, as well as information about residential schools and their locations. So it's good learning for you and for your students. So my commitment to the land involves raising my family to respect, appreciate, and care for the many lakes, rivers, green spaces, spaces marshlands, and conservation areas around Chatham, Kent, and beyond. We love to ride our bikes through Rondo Park, take walks through Paxton's Bush, and splash and pay, play in the Erie Shores. It is important to understand our impact on these spaces and that we share them with all other living things. It is also important to make a commitment to the people whose traditional land we live on. As of October 12th of this year, there are 31 long-term drinking advisories in effect in 27 Indigenous communities across Canada. Access to clean drinking water is a basic human right. I encourage you to support and amplify the Indigenous voices standing up for their right to clean drinking water. And there are many groups and organizations advocating and raising money for this cause. So I encourage you to research and contribute to these quality of life initiatives. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Shani. Um, so we're going to take a look at the components of a comprehensive math instruction. Um, we know that math instruction has shifted to be more responsive to our student needs. We must provide opportunities for students to have a variety of experiences in order to meet them where they are at. Uh, these are the topics that we are going to be exploring in our time together. And uh, we will share the link to this presentation in the chat. Um, and anytime you see uh, this click here button, I will provide you a link to uh, the website that we are talking about. So you might wanna take a look at that. We also encourage you to uh, pose any questions or wonderings that you have in the chat box and uh, we will work to answer your questions um, in a timely fashion. Brie, you're muted. Of course I am, sorry about that. Um, so when we are planning for our math instruction, we should be planning uh, in connection to assessment and evaluation. Uh, so we use the triangulation of data to guide practice, shifting from whole group instruction and worksheets to meaningful interactions with and among students to build their mathematical understanding and guide in our instructional next steps. Um, so I'll bring your attention over to the image on the right. Um, it's important sometimes to, to remind ourselves 
um, that the product doesn't have to be the only form of assessment that we uh, value. Um, in this image, it kind of shows that the product is never the largest. It's either equal to or less than the observations and conversations. Um, it's important to gather data from a variety of sources. We don't want to rely on only one source. Uh, we know some students' strengths is to share or orally, and we need to provide a variety of opportunities to, for students to learn and demonstrate their understanding and knowledge according to their own personal strengths. Um, there is so much value and meaning in meaningful conversations with and among our students, and we can gain so much assessment data and information that way to uh, help us guide our planning and instruction. Okay, and these are some of the main components to include for uh, when planning for comprehensive math instruction, and we're going to get into some of those components in a little bit more detail now. Okay, so this is the big one. Um, the curriculum is the basis of all learning that our students will do. Uh, the online platform, if you haven't checked it out, uh, offers an incredible number of resources to help you plan for math, uh, no matter what grade you teach. Um, please refer to it often. There are so many resources on there and we're gonna highlight a few for you now. So when you first go into the online platform, this is the homepage that you'll see. Uh, keep in mind that it does look slightly different on an iPad than it does on a computer. This is a screenshot from a computer screen. Um, along the left-hand side are some resources and along the right-hand side are um, some quick links and then grades are in the center there. Okay, so just a little more specifically, the, that left-hand side there had um, a bunch of resources uh, that provide a wide range of videos, articles, um, documents that help in planning for math instruction. I encourage you to check these out. Uh, you'll find information regarding high impact strategies, uh, videos about building a learning community, key changes to the curriculum since it's re-released in 2020, uh, the grade seven and eight, eight to nine alignment chart, my, my apologies. Um, and that's just a small number of what you'll find in that section there. Uh, then uh, when you, if we went back to the homepage along the right, there were some quick links. Um, here you'll find a PDF version of the curriculum. If you are someone who likes a paper copy of something, uh, you can print just sections of it if you want to. Uh, keep in mind that with the PDF version, if you're printing something, uh, there are no examples or sample tasks, um, which is what the digital platform does include. They're very valuable. Um, they, the printable PDF just has the key concepts. Also in this section, you'll find links to the achievement chart, growing success and long range plans. Um, long range plans have been created in a few different ways. Uh, take the time if you're going to use them to see which one suits you and your students best. Um, there are ministry developed long range plans as well as some developed by other school boards. So again, uh, take the time to look at what works for you and your students and the needs of them. Okay, and then along the middle is the grade. I'm going to pause you for a sec, Brie. I'm sorry. I think someone in the chat is <clears throat> not able to see the shared screen. They can just see your image. So I, it, it is Tanya Steele who's presenting. Right. So you may yeah. have to... Um click on at the top of your screen there should be um, an option that says more um, and so you can probably click on that to find some different options about um, how you organize your screen um, it might be on the bottom of your screens so you might just have to play with some of those buttons um, for that are others able to see what we are sharing can you maybe share in the chat or give us a thumbs up um, with that feature let us know. Yeah, other yeah, people are okay. saying yes. Okay, so then that would just be um, your screen. Uh, so you'll have to just adjust some of the options that are um, in Zoom with that. Thanks for mentioning that though. Hopefully others can navigate yeah. that. Yes, some other ideas, like if you do a side-by-side -side view. Yeah. Gallery. So, sorry to interrupt, Brie. No, that's great, perfect. I'm glad that it was that solution. 
Um, so then again, uh, the grades that you'll see in the, the center of that homepage, um, once you've clicked on your grade level, it will pop up to um, an in this grade section. Today, we're gonna look closer at the expectations by strand. So once you've clicked on that, there's all your expectations by strand. Um, uh, there's information for parents in the glossary, and we're just gonna click on the strand that we wanna highlight. Not that there's one specific, but we'll show you some examples today. So once you've clicked on your strand, um, you'll notice the overall expectations followed by um, a, a link to specific expectations. Um, each specific expectation is stated. Um, any terms that are in the glossary will have a dotted line underneath the term. So you can click on that dotted line and it, uh, a pop-up just comes up from the bottom of your screen defining what that term is. Um, you'll also notice a compare grades link. So this allows you to identify the way uh, this specific expectation is uh, in the previous grade and the next grade uh, after that one, which is kind of nice to see, especially if you've got some learners who are um, struggling or who maybe need a little extra. Okay, so the, oh, sorry, Tanya, can you go back real quick? The main thing that I wanted to point out by the flashy red thing on the page is the teacher supports. Um, so we're gonna go dive into teacher supports because every single specific expectation on the online platform has these teacher supports, which is really neat. Okay, so once you click teacher supports, you'll see examples, key concepts and sample tasks. Um, they are, we'll go to the next page actually, Tanya. So the examples are intended to guide teachers in thinking about how the learning might be demonstrated. Um, also, the examples are extremely helpful. I know that the, um, each specific expectation can seem a little bit wordy in the curriculum. Sometimes some are more clear than others. So if uh, you're unclear about exactly what each specific expectation is um, really about, the examples are a really great way for you to um, kind of figure that out. Um, the key concepts are important when doing your planning. So these are the ideas that need to be taught in order com to completely cover each specific expectation. Um, I know that my teacher brain goes to these key concepts quite frequently when I'm thinking about my learning goals. Um, they're very specific. Um, they help me in planning for any mini lessons, or small group lessons or whole group lessons. Um, those are really where I get my, my ideas for how I'm going to teach those concepts. And then the sample tasks. So sample tasks are uh, just that. They are prompts or ideas that students could try to demonstrate their learning. Um, they're meant to be used. They can be um, changed or modified how you see fit and for your learners. Um, the context can be changed, numbers can be changed obviously. Uh, but they're a good starting point in helping to design meaningful tasks for your students. Um, it is important to mention though, this platform mentions also uh, in different uh, spots that it's extremely important that tasks are, and learning context should be affirming of, relevant to, and reflective of students' lives and backgrounds. Um, and that provides students with the opportunity to learn about diverse cultures and communities in a respectful and informed way. Awesome. And Bree, does every section have that um, or are only some sections um, have the, all of those teacher supports? So great question, Tanya. The, there are teacher supports in all of every, for every specific expectation. What the, um, the, the limiting thing is in the number strand, the, there are only the examples right now. There are no key concepts or sample tasks but uh, we see this as a working document and uh, imagine that they will be coming soon. Thank you, Bree. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna pivot to talk a little bit about number talks. Uh, it's important to discuss this as this will continue to be a board-wide strategic goal as one of the actions that we take to support students in their numeracy learning. 
The information that we are learning from this data is helping to guide our work in numeracy. So some key components of a number talk is that they are regu regularly implemented in your classroom for you to see progress. So uh, if you want to see progress with them, you're going to want to implement them multiple times a week. Um, but you can be flexible with that routine. It doesn't always have to be during your math block, depending on your student stamina and what you have planned for the day. That five to 15 minutes of sitting and talking time, they may need uh, a body break after that. So um, you know your students and you can be flexible with that. So this is a great way to do some assessment for, as, and of learning. As Bree said in the triangulation of data importance, the importance of providing students um, the opportunity to share orally as a, an accommodation, because that may be the best way for students to, to share. And you can get a lot based on these oral conversations. Um, using the... Um, Symbols, the hand symbols is also great um, to make it equitable for everyone, uh, ease anxiety. So if you're interested in more information about there, we've got the two number talks books, the green book, the blue book, um, the blue book is the K to five and then the green book is the intermediate. Um, there was just a presentation done by Leslie, Lori and Jordan. Um, and it was recorded, so if you want more information on the Green Book, you can go back and watch that recording when it's out. Let's move on to the next slide, because I think it's important to um, differentiate between number talks and math talks. Um, this is linked to the math website that can give you a full um, write-up of the difference and how you could use them both. Um, and there's also those links in the image on the right to some math talk websites for you to use. Um, so a number talk is specifically used to describe computational problems, uh, giving students the opportunity to share their mathematical thinking, whereas a math talk can be a variety of routines or discussions um, that your classroom engages with around multiple mathematical concepts rather than the operational strategies. And then I want to put a quick plug in for the intentional talk book. Um, the Sherry Parish number talks are the open strategy sharing discussions. And there is a chapter one um, in this book about the open strategy sharing. But then there are also five different targeted discussion number talks. Uh, so if you want to take your number talks to a different level, this is a, a great book that um, gives specific examples. Um, as well as case studies on when, why, and how to use each of these targeted discussions in your classroom. Um, so the targeted discussions can be useful specifically when you want to encourage students to either use a specific strategy, compare specific strategies, or if you've got students who are stuck on one, um, can help encourage them to try something new. So if your school does not have this book yet, ask your principal if your school doesn't have it yet, your coach will be bringing it the next time they are there. So all schools will have them. Thank you, Shannon. Um, so we're going to take a look at a three-part math lesson right now. Um, the first part of the that is the getting started section. Uh, this often sparks curiosity for the learning that is going to be done. It can take many different forms and activities. Uh, you might do a number talk or a math talk. Uh, show a provocation, post the question. This is really going to be dependent on your learning goals, the content and the focus that you have for that lesson. The next section of working on it uh, comes in many forms as well. Uh, maybe problem solving tasks and experiences, math conversations, flexible groupings, deliberate practice, using tools. This is opportunity for students to explore the concept that you identified in that learning goal. Uh, and then the consolidation refers back to that learning goal and to check in on student understanding or misunderstandings and to reinforce their learning. It is an opportunity to use the conversations and observations to strate strategically coordinate student sharing of solutions to the lesson uh, to help students make connections to reinforce that learning. Um, and we're going to take a look at an uh, Ontario Math Support web 
site uh, that uh, follows the three-part lesson model. Um, this website is a growing document and now houses lessons for coding, financial literacy, math modeling, and uh, also has numeracy in there as well, which is a new um, addition. Uh, when you go to this website, you can search for a lesson based on the strand uh, or the grade uh, as well. In this instance, I have chosen a grade three financial literacy lesson. Many lessons, um, so once you click on that, are housed within um, Google Doc, uh, the Google framework. So it will take you to uh, either a document or a folder. Um, and if there are folders, it provides a copy of all the required materials for that lesson, such as the lesson, assessment plans, posters, spreadsheets, everything that you might need for that. Um, so we're gonna get the lesson plan. Uh, for the value of small change in a grade three lesson. Uh, but most lessons will also follow this type of format. Uh, they anchor the overall and specific curriculum expectations, how long it, it may it's expected to take. So sometimes they will be expected to take 60 minutes or two periods, um, and it will give you that information there. Um, it also has learning goals and success criteria. Uh, you can really easily use those uh, to share with your students. Uh, the lesson lists any materials that you might need uh, and often links the websites or pages that you might need for that lesson right in there so we can see those blue hyperlinks. Um, it goes through the student activities and teacher moves, uh, which provides some really great questions for teachers to ask. Um, to kind of get students thinking a little bit more. Uh, there are also examples, assessment suggestions as well. Here we can see the consolidation suggestions or next steps for students and teachers. Uh, sometimes it may have suggestions for another lesson on the Ontario Mass Support page. Um, sometimes there are cross-curricular connections. Uh, that students might have an interest in exploring next. Um, and so we can see that those are all linked within there. Um, and it also, this one uh, just shows that there is a poster and a slideshow of materials that were included for this lesson. Um, some lessons, for example, in the either intermediate grades include a spreadsheet that is already formatted for different kinds of interest rates when you are exploring that, for example. Um, so it really does have a lot of really great um, resources at your fingertips. So Tanya, if a teacher opens up one of the links um, from the drive, whether it's a doc um, or a spreadsheet, how can they manipulate that if they want to keep it? Awesome. So once it opens up to this section right here, um, it opens in a Google Drive. And so you would want to make a copy of that if you want to make changes uh, so that you have your own access to that. Um, so great question, Cheney. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at that small group instruction. Yeah, so small group instruction, uh, I think we all know is a powerful instructional strategy for moving student learning forward. Um, it allows for brief uh, targeted guided math instruction that meets the learning needs of specific students at specific times. Um, by working with small and flexible groups, whether they're hom homogeneous or heterogeneous, the educator is able to personalize the conversations and address key concepts uh, that need to be clarified in order to prevent gaps from developing. Uh, to close that gaps that already exist or to extend thinking. Um, small group instruction includes models and representations, guided practice and feedback. Uh, small group instruction can focus on a mathematical concept or a process such as problem solving, reasoning, proving or representing thinking. Uh, be responsive to the focus on the classroom and your learning goals. Uh, and we've seen that these have been really kind of used a lot more um, this year than I saw last year, I would say. Um, as we talk about the, the learning differences between our learners, that's a great way to kind of meet those students where they're at um, when you have them doing different types of deliberate practice in those groups. All right, so let's talk about deliberate practice. Thanks, ladies. Um, so deliberate practice is a necessary component of an effective math program. 
Practice is best when it is deliberate, purposeful, and spaced, and it can take many forms, whether that looks like math games, math stations, paper and pencil tasks, and any of these can be done either independently with a partner or even small group. So regardless of the form of practice, ongoing feedback is crucial so that students know that they are practicing correctly um, and that they have pr practiced sufficiently. So this ensures that practice is as effective as possible. While skill development is a part of effective practice, practice, it is not the only thing that students need to work on. Students need to practice representing their thinking, problem solving, and communicating their thinking. Such practice strengthens the connection between skills, concepts, and strategies. Students also need to practice metacognition or reflecting their learning. With that, the learning becomes self-directed. When a student thinks, I think I get it now, but I need a little more practice, to feel comfortable doing it on my own, then that student has taken ownership of their learning. It is important to understand that practice follows understanding. So then students are practicing misconceptions. Um, and then additionally, if the focus on the practice of procedures is early in the learning, then the students are going to um, lose out on some deeper understanding of the concepts. So practice of procedures should occur after the students have a good understanding of the concepts. To help us, we can go to the next slide, um, put this deliberate practice um, into your classroom. There is the math website linked with the click here. There is a drop down list at the top with all of the loss and continuous strategies. And then on each one of those pages, it follows the um, format. You'll see a what is it with an explanation, small explanation, and then videos to show you how to use it. Uh, and then you scroll down and then there's an overview explanation with more detail of how it's used and then pictures of student use and examples. Um, and then if you scroll down more, there's the continua and you will see it the strategy circle. So then you can see which phase of the continuum that strategy is in. Um, and the phases are direct modeling and counting, counting more efficiently and tracking, working with the numbers and then proficiency. So keep scrolling to find how to support the student using that strategy. Um, and then the where to next and that where to next has links to the next page um, of the next strategy you want your students to be working on. Then at the bottom of the page, there are games and activities with videos and links to help you support students with the strategy. And then we can go to the next slide because this goes with those strategies and games uh, are the spreadsheets. So to support further with the games, we've got the two spreadsheets for addition and subtraction and the multiplication and division um, of the loss and strategies. Using the tabs along the bottom to navigate these strategies, you will then find a page with multiple games organized for you with all the black line masters, instructions, and links that you will need to facilitate these for your students. So remember, this is a growing document. It will be added to over time. You must be logged into your lkdsb.com account to view it. Um, and then it is, the links are in that click here at the top of the page for you. So here is a little overview if you um, want some flexibility and, and just like what might it look like, my, my week of comprehensive math. So keeping in mind that this is flexible and this is just an idea, maybe a jumping off point for you, changed based on your needs and your student needs. Um, every day doesn't have to be that three-part lesson. You just need to always make sure that you have a focus and you're being intentional with what you want your students to be doing or practicing or taking away from in that day. So here's one example. Um, so you can see that we don't have a number talk every day and we don't have the three part lesson every day. Just gives you some flexibility of what it could look like, um, making time for all these important practices. And then there's another one um, with another example. So you'll get this slideshow, you have it, it's in the chat. Um, if you wanna refer back to either one of these, if you like, if one of them stands out as interesting to you. Okay. Um, so this is the high impact instructional practices in math. 
Uh, this is one of the, the resources that is uh, available to you in the, on the online platform. So again, make sure you go and check out some of those, those resources. This is an excellent um, tool. It's a, you can print it out as a PDF or just check it out online. Um, it's, a, it's an easy read and it's got some really great information in it. So uh, what it is, is uh, it's a series of fact sheets explaining some high impact instructional practices um, that researchers have consistently shown to have a high impact on teaching and learning math. Uh, they describe the practices, what they look like in the classroom and how they might be implemented. Um, the thoughtful use of high impact uh, instructional practices, including knowing when to use them and how they might be combined to best support the achievement of specific math, math goals is an essential component of effective math instruction. Um, while a lesson may prominently feature one of these high impact practices, other practices will inevitably be involved. Um, the practices are rarely used in isolation, nor is there a single best practice. Um, instead, educators choose the right practice for the right time um, in order to create an optimal, optimal learning experience for their students. And knowing the needs of your students and their strengths um, is obviously very important in, in deciding what works best for them. So um, this is just a sample of what um, one of those high impact strategies would be. Um, so each strategy is explained in a two page fact sheet. The first page describes strategy, including benefits to students, why it's important, um, what makes it uh, a high impact strategy. And then the second page outlines what it looks like in the classroom at different stages of student understanding, um, including like when students are beginning to learn about a concept, as students progress with their learning, and when students are deep in the learning. Um, and it kind of goes into what your success criteria might look like in the classroom for each of those high impact strategies. And each of those, are each of them uh, have the same format here, right, Rain? They do, they're all laid out the exact same way. So it's uh, you know, super easy to read. And if you're, uh, you know, if you're kind of thinking about one of those high impact strategies, if you don't mind actually, Tony, going back to the previous slide, just so I can refer to it. So if you're somebody who, you know, you, you do a lot of, um, uh, you've got your learning goals and success criteria, you're, you're feeling really good about that and your descriptive feedback, but maybe small group is instruction is one of those areas that um, you wanna try and, and do more of, that this kind of, um, this document gives you the opportunity to just look at some. You don't have to read through the whole thing all at once. Um, it allows you to kind of focus in on what your needs are as well. Because um, we've all got our strengths and needs as teachers as well. So, <laughs> all right. Do so we have any? Yeah, that's the, it, I think um, this was one of those things that, that I know that Tanya and Shani and I, um, as well as our as our colleagues in other buildings are finding that that people are are asking questions about right now um, planning and that sort of thing. So if there are any questions or wonderings or great ideas, then let us know. Feel free to put that in. And while um, a few are maybe formulating their questions, um, I'll just put up here. Um, this is a link or a a list of coaches and the schools that we are at. Um, so if you are maybe new to a school, uh, you can take a look and see uh, what school you are at and, um, and the email address of your coach um, so that you can reach out to them at any time. Um, it doesn't have, we're not um, only able to talk to you during the week that we are at your school. You're welcome to email us at any time um, and please do reach out to us if and when you have questions. Okay. Are any questions or wonderings that have come come up in the chat? Nope. I think nope. that's it. So um, again, we'll be processing. <laughs> please reach out anytime. Um, oh, any resources to set up um, uh, mass centers? Oh, and Jacinda has a question as well. So 
specific resources to help with that, uh, Jen, I'm, I'm not aware of any. Um, but again, if you're thinking about mass centers, I would refer to that small group instruction uh, fact sheet in the high impact strategies to help with some ideas. Um, that might be a good place to start. I know that centers is a, is a tricky thing, it depends on a whole lot. So um, including like right down to classroom management and all of that stuff. So I would refer to that first for some ideas. Math games is always a great place to start with centers, I would think. I agree. Yeah, I was thinking that as well, that you might want to take a look at the loss and continua, think about what strategies students are using, um, and then thinking about um, what kind of groups might be good fits for them to practice some of those strategies that you want them to, to continue exploring. Okay, there's a few questions here. So I'm just going to go back up to the top to the first one that we saw. Does the LKDSB Math Resources website only pertain to number sense? So the math resources website is very much um, in line with the loss and continua. That's how it's been set up. So yes, um, it is primarily in number sense. Um, do, you do you recommend doing small group instruction when other students are working on math games? For sure, what a great, great use of that time. Absolutely. Um, does the board have access to Math Up? Lots of small center ideas within there too. Uh, Math Up is a is a resource that many people in the board do have access to, but it is not a board. Um, it's not something that the board has purchased as a general login. So pe some people do have their own personal logins, but no, it is not a um, something that the board has purchased for all to use. <laughs> How do we review the PDF from this workshop in the future? So Allison, the, I believe the link is kind of close to the top of this chat. We can repost it here at the bottom, but if you click that link and then save the PDF, that should be, um, you should be able to uh, access it whenever you'd like. I will go and grab that actually. Oh, I'll grab it. And our dear friend, Pam Gallant says, check out the blog for links too. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, I just yeah. wanted to add that when, yes, you're talking math today, but you also support literacy questions too, right? So if someone sees your name there and thinking, oh, I'm not, don't teach math, you can have uh, literacy conversations too. I know some of the people on the team are super excited to talk literacy. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Pam, for that. Um, we That's are excited true. to talk uh, Hegarty or Bass in particular um, with any questions that you have for that. Yeah, we forgot to mention that since this presentation was just yeah. strictly about math. But yes, talk to us about language as well. Um, We've had a lot of literacy conversations this year already. <laughs> um, Lee has asked, so abil both ability and mixed ability groups are recommended a balance of the two. Yes, I would say, depending on your focus, definitely mix those groups up as much as possible. Yeah, it's great for students to be in a like ability so that they can practice some of those skills, but it's also great for them to have some mixed abilities and learn from their peers. And Allison, I just posted that link to the PDF again, so it's there if you are looking for it. All right, well, I'll just say thank you to everyone. Um, that's the end of our presentation for you of information we wanted to share. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to hang on and you, um, come off mute and have a chat with us. Um, but if you uh, wanted to use the washroom before your next meeting, if you wanted, you're welcome to do that as well. Thank you for joining us. Um, we appreciate that you the time you spent with us today.